Ever since Microsoft released the system requirements of the new upcoming OS, Windows 11, it created all sorts of confusions among users. And Microsoft itself is solely responsible for this mess. Cause they said one thing in the beginning, then they changed it, then they again deviated from what they said in the previous time. It's a total mess. Now I'm not gonna go into that discussion, rather in this video I'll show you how to install Windows 11 in any PC, even in an unsupported system. Hey guys, this is Shankho here and welcome to Smart Bengali. First of all, let me show you what's the latest system requirements released by Microsoft for Windows 11. So as for Microsoft's statement, this is the current system requirement for Windows 11. Now among these things, I would like to point out three major requirements. First thing is, if you open the compatible 64-bit processors list and then you open the sublist for AMD and Intel CPUs, you'll see surprisingly tons of CPUs are missing in this list. Microsoft basically ditched every Intel CPUs before 8th generation from their core processors lineup. And the same story for AMD too. Piledriver, Bulldozer, Streamrollers, all of them are missing from this list. So this was my first highlighting point. And the second point is, your system should run on unified EFI with secure boot enabled. So apparently it means that if you are using a legacy BIOS, you can't install Windows 11. And the final point is, your system should support TPM 2.0. Initially Microsoft said TPM 1.2 would do, but later they bumped it up to TPM 2.0. Now what is TPM, what is Unified EFI, what is Secure Boot, I am not going to discuss all of this in this video. That's not the point of this video. The basic objective of this video is to show you how to install Windows 11 on any old computer which doesn't support TPM 2.0 and Windows 11's other system requirements. By the way, if you want to know about TPM, UEFI, Secure Boot, all of these things, you can check out my video about BIOS explanation. I made that video back in 2019 and in that video I've discussed about all of these topics briefly. I'll drop the link in the description. Alright, now let me show you how to install Windows 11 on any PC. So this is a friend's old computer. He left it at my place to get it fixed and I thought this might be an excellent opportunity to have some fun with it. First let me show you the system specification. As you can see in the screen, this is a fairly old system. It runs on Intel's 4th generation core i3 processor. You may recall that Windows 11 requires at least 8th generation of Intel CPUs. So this thing is nowhere close to the basic requirements of Windows 11. Currently it is running on Windows 10 Pro to 1H1 version. I know by fact that this motherboard doesn't support TPM port, but still let me show it to you. So open run, type tpm.msc, then enter. As you can see, no TPM is attached with the system. No worries, I'll show you the BIOS too. Now, in order to install Windows 11, this system should run on UEFI mode with Secure Boot enabled. So let's check it. You can see this system is running on Unified EFI. In case your system is running on Legacy or Legacy plus UEFI or Legacy plus CSM mode, then you need to switch to UEFI. But please remember that this is very important. If your drive's partition structure is NBR, and you switch your BIOS from UEFI to legacy, then your system won't boot. It will show that boot device is not found. So please check your partition structure before switching to UEFI. Now there's multiple ways to check it. The easiest way for me is to open the Windows Power Cell. Type get dash disk. You can see the partition style is showing GPT. That means we are good to go. In case your system shows MBS style, then you need to first convert it to GPT. Now you'll find tons of tutorials on YouTube which will show you how to convert MBS to GPT drive, so I'm not gonna show that to you. Now for this particular system, we are running on unified EFI, but secure boot is not enabled. So let's enable it from BIOS, I mean UFI. Now I'm pretty sure that I don't need to tell you how to boot into the BIOS and enable the secure boot, but just in case you don't know, in order to open BIOS, while your PC starts booting, repeatedly press the delete button on your keyboard. Your system will boot into the firmware settings. Just like it did here. Now from these settings, you need to find the secure boot option. Uh, this is a very old firmware, so it doesn't have that searching feature. I need to search it manually. Now we will find these options under the BIOS features section. You can see that boot mode is set to UEFI only. In case it is in legacy mode or UFI and legacy combo mode, you need to switch it to UFI just like I said earlier. Make sure you are using GPT file structure before switching, otherwise your system won't boot. Anyway, let's get back to the UFI only. 
Now let me scroll down. You can see secure boot is disabled. So I need to enable it. To do so, I need to open Windows 8 features. Now I need to switch Windows 8 or Windows 8 WHQL. Then only the secure boot option will show in this BIOS. You can see we have the option now. So let's enable it. So our job is done here. You need to save the settings and boot into the existing system. So just a quick recap. So far what we did, we just made sure that system is running on unified EFI and enable the secure boot. Your bias might look different, but basically you need to do the same thing. That is enabling the secure boot. So press F10 to save the changes and exit the former settings. First, let's check if we can get the update from the official dev channel. I'm pretty sure it won't happen because this PC doesn't have the TPM thingy, right? But still I'm gonna show it to you because in case you are using a new PC and your system supports the official system requirements, that means you have TPM and all other stuff that is required to install Windows 11, then this would be the easiest method. Because I wanna show you how to install Windows 11 in both supported and non-supported systems. So we need to open settings. Under settings, open update and security. Here you need to enroll on Windows Insider program. In order to enroll, we need to turn on the optional diagnostic data. So let's click on it and change it to optional. Again, let's get back to the Insider program. Now you'll see the get started button here. Click on it. By the way, it is showing your PC doesn't support the minimum system requirements and your options will be limited, but ignore it, click on register. Click on sign up, accept the terms and conditions. If you want, you can read it. Click on submit and close the dialog. So now we need to link a Microsoft account. So let me do it. Okay, I have linked the Microsoft account. Now I need to restart the system. So I have restarted the PC. Now let's check it again. So again, let's go to the settings, then update and security, and then Windows Insider program. You can see it is only showing the release preview channel. If this system had necessary hardware for Windows 11, then it would show the dev channel. And from that dev channel, we'd get the Windows 11 update. But since this hardware doesn't support Windows 11, so it is not showing here. So this is all about the official method for those who had the necessary system requirements. Now I'm going to show you the Windows 11 installation method for those who doesn't have the TPM 2.0 and running an old system. So now I'll show you the Windows 11 installation procedure for unsupported hardware. In this method, we need the Windows 11 ISO file. Now unfortunately, Microsoft doesn't provide us the file. So far, they released the developer preview version only via Windows updates. But it doesn't stop us from installing Windows 11. That's the way. We can create our own ISO. So fire up a browser. Now we need to open this site, updump.net. This one. From this website, we can download Windows 11 update files and then build our own ISO file. Although this is not an official site, but you can download Windows installation files directly from Microsoft update servers from here. So files are not coming from any third party. It's coming from directly from Microsoft servers. Go to the download tab. Here you need to search for Windows 11 Insider Preview Release. Now here we have multiple options. For example, these are the latest update files. .71 is the latest version as of today. But I'm gonna stick to this .65 version. Cause I've tested it earlier. It has less bugs. At least I think so. So I'm selecting it. Here you can select your desired language. We have the option to select the edition. If you need multi edition, then select all except the Microsoft team version, of course. Click next. Now this page is quite important. 
Make sure you have selected download and convert to ISO radio button. And if you want you can include the latest updates. Uh, only the ISO file size would be larger. Finally select this ESD compression. It will convert WIM image to ESD. Finally click create download package. Now this is a tiny file. It's not the ISO file of course. Actually this is a script which will help us to download the update files and build the ISO file by ourselves. Now we need to extract this compressed file. Now these are the tools required to convert the files to ISO. And this is open source project so you can read what it does before running it. When you are ready execute the bat file. That's it. You don't need to do anything else. Now this script will first download the update files and then build the ISO for you. And this is a very time consuming process. It can take even hours. So of course I'm gonna edit out this portion. I'll come back when the downloading and ISO building process gets completed. Okay, it's still going on. It is actually taking too much time. Make sure you have a good internet connection before doing it. I'll come back when the downloading and ISO building process gets completed. I'm back guys, finally the ISO creation process gets completed. It took too much time. So we have the ISO file now. Now let's check it. You'll find the ISO inside the folder where you ran the script. In this particular case here. So this is the ISO file. Let me copy the ISO to a different location. So we have the Windows 11 ISO file now. Now we can install it in two ways. The first one is to mount the ISO file and then begin the installation process directly from here. Alternatively you can create a bootable media using a pen drive and then delete your existing system. Then install a fresh copy of Windows 11 in your hard disk. I prefer the second way so I'm gonna show you to now. To make a bootable media we need two things a pen drive and a software called Rufus. I mean there are tons of softwares are available for this purpose but this one is my favorite. I'll put the link in the description. Now open the Rufus software. Plug your pen drive to your USB port. It will detect automatically. So this 16 GB drive is my pen drive. Now I'm gonna select the Windows 11 ISO file which you have downloaded earlier. Select the standard windows installation because we don't need a live disk. Here select the partition system to GPT and the target system to UEFI. But please remember if you have the MBR disk then you need to convert it to the GPT first. Now instead of FAT32 select NTFS file system because the ISO file size is too big. Finally click start. And this process would take some time depending on your system. If you plug in your pen drive in your USB 3 port and your pen drive supports USB 3 then it would take less time. So finally our bootable pen drive with Windows 11 is ready. Just ignore this warning cause I'll show you how to bypass this secure boot check later. Now restart the PC and boot from this bootable pen drive. Now there are multiple ways to do it. You can change the boot device priority, you can change the boot device order etc. But for me the easiest way is to select the pen drive from boot options of the BIOS menu. So we have successfully booted into the installation media. Now on this screen we just need to do one last thing and then we are good to go. Well we need to do two things. 
We need to disable the TPM and secure boot check with a register hack. So our good old friend CMD will help us here. To call him, press Shift plus F10 in the screen. See CMD is here for you. Now type regedit reg edit and then press enter. So this is the registry editor. I'm extremely sorry for my poor video quality and weird camera angle. Actually I had no idea regarding the alignment and focus during shoot. Anyway, go to H key local machine. Under that folder, go to system and under system, go to setup. Here we need to create a key. So right click on it, create new key and name it as lab config. Make sure to write the exact same name with the camel case. Now in this folder, you need to create two D word. So right click, select new D word 32 bit. Now name it as bypass TPM check. Write the exact same name and set the value flag to one. We need to create another entry. Bypass secure boot check. and also set the value to 1. So our job is done here. This thing will bypass the TPM and secure boot check. Microsoft might change it later but for now it's working fine. Now you just need to install the Windows 11 in the normal way just like you always do. Now if you know how to install Windows in a newly formatted partition then you can skip the rest of the video cause the rest process is just normal Windows installation. But of course you are welcome to tag alone. So I'll click next. In this screen, I'll select I don't have a product key because the key is embedded to the motherboard and it will be automatically detected later. Accept the terms and condition. Once a wise man said that you must read all the terms and conditions before agreeing with it, but I'm not so wise. So I'll accept it. Now in this screen, I'll choose custom because I'll format a partition. Now this partition number 4 is my C drive where the existing Windows 10 is residing. So I'll delete it and install Windows 11 in this section of the hard disk. So I'll select the unallocated space which I just created. Then I'll click next. Windows will automatically format this space to NTFS and then begin installing the new ways. So the installation is going on. Okay, the installation is done and the system will reboot. Make sure to remove the pen drive now. Otherwise, the system might boot into the pen drive instead of booting into the newly installed OS. Finally, the Windows 11 logo. So let me quickly set these configurations. Okay, we are in the desktop now. You can see we have successfully installed Windows 11 in this Potato PC, even though it doesn't support Windows 11 system requirements. So guys, that's it for this video. I'm sorry for this long video, but I tried to cover everything. Although I skipped some tech jargon discussions cause that would make this video unnecessary even longer. But if you find this useful, please like this video and please subscribe to my channel. Your subscription will motivate me to make more videos like this. And if you find any issues during this installation process, write them in the comment section. I'll surely try to help. So this is Shanko signing off here. Thanks for watching and subscribe to Smart Bengali.